Hey guys, this is Daily Dose of Sunray and long time no see with a sitting down and talking video. Today I've prepared a Q&A for my honors year and I posted a story on Instagram maybe in like August to ask you guys to ask me anything about honors. I know it's a bit late but I'm, I decided to film it now. I was going to film it a bit earlier when the application process was like starting but I really couldn't find time to sit down and film a video and also edit it. So I took out, I took most of the application process questions out and I did um, answer those questions individually by, by DM to those people who asked. So if you do have any questions around like the application process, please feel free to DM me. But yeah, so I'll be answering I'll be answering a few questions. So the first question that I got was why did I choose to do honors? Which is a very good question to start on. Um so going back to 2021, which was last year, after I got the rejection emails from my med school application, I was I was quite I was very lost, confused in what I should be doing, what the next step should be. After getting that rejection letter, my next question was do I start a new master course where I study where I pursue a different career? Um, or do I take a gap year and just focus on GAMSAT or do I do an honors year? All three choices that I had was not perfect it didn't satisfy me 100% so there was nothing like this is my next step I'm gonna do this I had to really think about it and do what's best for me and interestingly doing honors was never never ever in my thought I remember back in first year and even second year when I was talking to my friends I would be like whatever the situation I'm not gonna do honors because I am not interested in research. I, I still remember saying that, but here I am now filming a Q&A about honors. Anyways, going back to the three choices, I didn't really want to do a gap year because I felt like I wasn't ready to spend that time of a year very productively. And if I was going to take a gap year, I wanted to know what I'm going to do in that one year what my goal is how i'm going to use this productively and know what kind of benefits it will have on my life me at the end of last year wasn't completely confident that i will be spending the gap year productively and it felt like a gap year was just like a waste of a year and i really enjoyed studying so i felt like i was going to be quite distressed <laughs> if i didn't have anything to study or to do so I was like, okay, maybe not a gap year. And then I thought about doing a different master's. And I looked three different courses. There was nothing that gave me that spark. So I was thinking, why would I want to do something that I'm not interested in while it increases my student debt and also uses like, what, two years of my time. So I was like, okay, maybe not master's. Maybe I will save that for a later time when I actually don't have any choices and then uh, me and my friend were talking about honors she suggested me to come to like those introductory sessions they have for each department so i was like why not and i went to one of them which was um department of general practice which is the department that i am in now and i met my supervisors i emailed them if they could make some time for me so we can have like a one-on-one -on -one chat and talk about the, the project that their supervising and after that talk I actually really liked my supervisor she was a very motherly figure and I felt like I had lots to learn from her after that talk I was like why not give honors a shot I know I don't like research but do I not like research because I've never I've never been interested in research or do I not like research because of like a specific reason and I couldn't think of a specific reason and I thought it was a good opportunity to try something new so yeah that's why I chose honors that was a pretty long story <laughs> and then my second question kind of leads on from my first question which was what's the benefit of doing honors for med so when I first began this honors journey I didn't know the benefit of honors like I didn't know what benefit honors could have in terms of applying to med or pursuing medicine as a career 
but once I started it and once I like started talking to different kind of people and hearing stuff from here and there I realized that honest actually have a has a really big impact so firstly I wrote it down so I don't forget it's an opportunity to raise your GPA so for those people who might not know in Victoria in Australia in Victoria I'm not too sure but the med process is you have first year, second year, third year and your bachelor and the ratio of the mark is 1 to 2 to 2 so if you did really bad in first year and you do honours your first year mark won't be included so your second year will be the 1 and then the third year and the honours year will be um, 2 and 2 so it's a very good opportunity to raise your GPA and also it's a great opportunity for research you learn something that you haven't learned in biomed um, for me that was definitely a benefit and I also know that some med courses also have research included in them so it will be helpful for that time it's like you already know what you're kind of doing um, also one really really big benefit that you could have from doing honours is by publishing your honours work with yourself as like the first author that will be a really big bonus basically it will just be really good for your CV it's very rare for especially my age or even older people to have a paper published in a journal with yourself as a first author and I feel like that's a very big bonus um, also, these are for people with really kind of awkward GPAs. Um, you can you can try your best in honors, get a H1, which is a seven in GPA. And for University of Queensland, they will only look at your honors mark. So if you get a H1 in your honors year, UQ University of Queensland will only take seven as your GPA. So it will be a perfect GPA. So if you really if you did really bad in first year, second year, year and third year in your bachelor degree and you do really well in your honours, you have a shot for um, applying to UQ. So that's a really big benefit and also one other benefit that you have is the opportunity to kind of understand your field of interest. For me, my field of interest was around sexual health um, and like sexual reproduction. So I chose a uh, topic around um, medical abortion and from doing this research I learned so much about that specific field so I feel like that was a really big benefit as well so you kind of know what you want to do once you get into med and then my third question was when you're picking a project what's more important supervisors or topic it really depends on what your goal is from your honors year if your goal is to get a H1. I feel like the ratio of importance between supervisors and topic would be around 65 to 45. Supervisors are so important in my opinion because they're there to guide your project, to have that overarching idea of where your project will go and how your project will be conducted. Um, and they're also so important for giving you constructive feedback, especially as a student who, haven't, who hasn't done research ever. You're pretty much jumping into the deep end, so it's very important for your supervisors to give you that constructive feedback so you can kind of know how research, how research should be done and like the writing style. My supervisors helped me a lot with my writing style because before I started honours my writing was very flowery because of Gamsat. <laughs> so my supervisors gave me a lot of feedback on how like research writing should be very concise um, and simple so that everyone can understand that there's no need for extra words to make your sentence look pretty which was something really hard to adapt to because I've been writing this flowery stuff for, the, for my whole life so that was a good that was some good constructive feedback that helped me um, do my assignments and my thesis and everything but in terms of topic um, choosing the right topic is so important because from my experience the time required to complete a project is different for every for every topic. So for example, some of my friends who are doing honours, I see them like five times a week, maybe even on the weekends, going in to their department to finish their honours. But for 
others like me, I was quite lucky to somehow choose a project that doesn't require that much time. This is just my opinion, but my project was quite... It, it, it flowed very well. I didn't experience any time constraint um, and I went into the department like once in two three weeks. I don't even remember. But yes, compared to other projects, I felt like my project was a bit more easy. But even though like your project is quite easy and simple, it really depends on the expectation of your supervisors as well because some supervisors may expect you to be there five times a week from nine to five while other supervisors may be like if you don't need to come in just do it at home why not so when you have that first initial meeting with your supervisor your potential supervisor um, I think it's important to ask what their expectations are so both is important but I feel like supervisors is important also I feel like it's not the right decision to choose a topic solely based on the little time requirement that it requires <laughs> if that makes sense. I feel like it's really important to actually do a topic that interests you because you're doing it for a whole year. So you really need to be invested in your project and to be invested, you need to be interested. So yeah, so the next question was, what's my research on? So the title of my research project was, what are health professionals' views on the need for emotional support for women following early medical abortion? So mine was a qualitative study, which means that my data was from interviews. So I wasn't in the lab. I interviewed health professionals involved in the delivery service of early medical abortions around Australia. That was really interesting as well. I don't know if I should talk more about my research because I don't know if you guys are interested. But basically my results just said, you know, most women don't feel that emotional distress after their early medical abortion. Um, but there is a need for emotional support services to be in place for those who are in need. So that was basically it. So deliver personalized care. Don't pigeonhole every woman's emotional needs into one and force them to have like emotional support because most of them are feeling fine. That was basically a summary of my research. And the next question was how independent or dependent was my project? Um, it was quite independent. Even despite having my supervisors around, their, their role was to just guide me and all the actions were done by me. So for example, the recruitment process of health professionals, interviews, uh, making a transcript of those interviews, analyzing them and like writing and everything, um, that was all done by me. My supervisor's role was to just read over them, give me feedback and I would just change my writing, like my assignments according to, their in, uh, according to their feedback and then like submit it. So yeah, it was very independent. You also work alone for Honours Project, so one person has one project. And my next question was, what is Honours Years comprised of? Um, this is different for each department, um, but for Department of General Practice, it was comprised of four assignments in the first semester. Um, and these assignments were there to help you later in your thesis writing and it actually did help me a lot um, and they're all around I think 2,000 words so 2,000 words for each assignment and then we had the three minute talk 3MT I don't know if it's shortened for three minute talk but anyway there's a thing called 3MT which is a thing that you have to talk about your project for three minutes um at this 3MT talk you don't have your results so you just like talk about your recruitment process what you're going to do so basically what you're going to be doing and then there's the lit review where you search in current databases for for past research around your topic so you kind of understand more about your topic that was also 2,000 words. And then finally, you have your thesis and your final oral presentation. So the thesis was 10,000 words plus minus 1,000. You, you feel like that 10,000 word limit is a lot, but if you start writing it, it's very hard to write everything down under 11,000 words. I had a lot of trouble cutting words out. So if you're worried that 10,000 words is long, don't worry about it. It is so easy to write 10,000 and the final oral presentation is when you um, talk about your, like your results, discussion, 
your whole project to your department and like the people in your department for us that was an eight minute presentation with two minute questions so it was a total of 10 minute presentation you also think eight minute presentation is quite long but i had so much trouble cutting down my script to eight minutes because there's so much to talk about but there's so little time so yeah that's what honors um is comprised of my second question was um was it worth it so far and with what you know so far now would you do it again um i guess i'm at the most best period to answer this since i've completed my honors mm, was it was it worth it definitely yes and i would definitely do it again i feel like i learned a lot and it really opened my eyes to research something that i thought i was never interested in and despite it was an it was a it was a choice that i made because i got rejected into med at the end of the day i feel like i learned something that i wouldn't have learned if i went into med straight away so yeah so that, so yeah it was really good um at the beginning when i started doing honors i'm not gonna lie i was not satisfied i wasn't i wasn't satisfied that i was doing honors but now after i finish and i look back i feel like it was a really good choice to make and my perception of honors has changed a lot and my last question was what was the hardest thing about doing honors um mm, i feel like the hardest thing that i had to deal with during honors wasn't like the work itself but it was that feeling of loneliness i felt a lot of it actually this year because first of all you're doing your project by yourself there's no other students that you work with basically and yes i had friend i had a friend that i could go to and talk about my honest project but at the end of the day she was also doing her honest project which was in a different um field so you can't expect them to understand what your results or discussion is or even like what your project is about because we're all doing something different so yeah i feel like loneliness was a big factor also because of covid i know that we didn't have any lockdowns this year i think i don't even remember but you know we were allowed to go into the department but because i live so far from my uni it was a very long travel distance so i didn't want to do that number one <laughs> as it and as a disability support worker i work with clients that have higher risk for covid and I didn't want to give myself um, any higher risk of getting COVID and then giving it to my clients which will make the situation bad so that was also one of the reasons why I kind of hesitated going into the department so most of the work was done at home and most of the work was done by me so yeah I think loneliness was the hardest thing that I had to deal with but it's not too bad so those were the eight questions that I prepared to answer and that's done. Um, I hope this Q&A helped to answer some of your questions and, and if you guys have any further questions around others, please feel free to DM me. Um, I will try to answer them as best as I could. And yeah, thank you for listening to this Q&A session <laughs> and I'll see you guys in my next vlog. Bye!